one of the patterns that I'm seeing over and over again is that um, in our stores, we have instances where we want to load a collection of data and instances where we want to load a single, um, a single instance of data, right? So we're using Rails on the back end. So these correspond to the index and the show methods. Um, so very frequently you'll see, uh, like in this case where we have this course store, give me a single course or set the current course. But then we also have a list of courses because we have to display a, a list of courses to the user. Um, now this, since we're using Flux, we also, um, this correspond, uh, it works with the, the actions layer right here. So you can see in the actions layer, we have a load course and we have a load course list. So this will load a single one using an ID and this will load a whole bunch of them. But inevitably, we rarely need to load a single one because the single one that we need has already been loaded by this guy. But in our view layer, we shouldn't have to care. We shouldn't have to know at the view layer what, what's already been loaded. Like you want the stores to deal with that or you want somebody else to handle that problem. Um, <clears throat> so in the view layer where this gets consumed, you'll still see the load course and with the ID because that, that view has to have the course loaded um, to display the, the data. Now, um, the problem is, is that the view doesn't know. And so it will always call it. So here we have an extra API call that we didn't need to make, right? We could have just, if, if we knew that we already had retrieved this course and it was available, um, in the store, then we could have just gotten it and we would have been happy. Um, so yeah, um, well, and in this case, the what's also happening is when you click load course, it's setting the current course in the store. So even though you could ask the, the store for the list of courses using the course list and give it an ID to get the specific course, um, it still wouldn't set the current value and re really what we need is to do both to get the the data and set the current value all right so in a different project um, we've had to deal with this and the way that we handle it is to make caching available in an api layer so <clears throat> in the actions when i say go load a product or go load a bunch of products we send that off to the products API. So the actions themselves are not the ones to call to the server. There's another layer and we say, hey, you API layer, you go deal with this. Um, and then you, you notice here that we're also using the newer um, syntax with async await. So these are going to be um, asynchronous calls. So the load products action is asynchronous. I think we talked about this maybe previously, but um, in order to use await inside of my function, the function has to be declared as asynchronous, which is great for actions, because usually the view just calls these actions and then, then they move on. They don't care about a return value from the action. Um, they let the action do something which will result in a store being updated. And in this case, that works great because then I can say, all right, pause execution right here on this await line until this guy returns. So now the magic can happen down in this API layer. So we'll go take a look at that. Um, so we have these um, static async methods. Again, we're gonna use await inside of these guys. Uh, so we have to declare them as asynchronous. And we let them handle the caching. So now we can store this cache and we can say, oh, you want the product of this specific ID. Do we have it in the cache? If we have it in the cache, we'll skip over going out and getting it and we'll just return it to you and we're done. So even though it looks like a call was made to the API, no call was made to the server. This executes very quickly and the, the store receives its data almost immediately and it can update and say, all right, the current product is or the current course or the current user, whatever it is you're trying to get, it will have that available immediately. Um, and all of the caching can be dealt with in this layer, which is the layer where, the layer that will actually know um, whether or not it should call to the server.
And then you can see right here, in the case where we didn't have the ID, uh, you can make the call out to the server, and then we cache the data, and then we return it. Same with um, queries of data. In this case, we're using the actual query as the key, um, and if that specific query has been made in the past, we can just return its value. Otherwise, we're going to go talk to the server. All right. So this is the pattern I would like to move to um, in all of our projects. So whenever we make API calls in our actions, maybe we can look at extracting that out into an API layer and then let that layer handle the caching of data. And there's even there's another piece of this which we'll talk about in another training uh, once we've fully implemented it and resolved all of the issues. It's what uh, Jaden and I have been working on, where these things become um, iterator functions. So if we were to do that, then at the action layer, instead of just calling the query once, you could actually call it multiple times using next, um, and then put that into a a loop where as long as that query later layer can pump data to me, I'm going to keep calling next. And the reason for doing something like that is is because um, your first query you might get the stuff from the cache, but then your cache might have gotten a little stale, and you you could then say, well, give me the stuff from the cache so that I can render quickly, but then go out and call the server anyway so that I can make sure I have fresh data, and then um, you can continue to pass that fresh data up to this, this other layer here and um, then make the updates in the stores. But we'll talk, like I said, we'll talk more about that later. That's just sort of a high level explanation of, of where we're headed. Okay, any questions about uh, this pattern and caching at the API layer? Any chance you can show how this would be done without async await? Or is it kind of dependent on that? Um, you could do it without async await. Async await is just um, really nice syntactic sugar. It just makes your life a lot easier. So we could do this with callbacks. We could do it with promises. Um, so you can imagine uh, this method right here, instead of being async await, it would return a promise. And then the layer above can do a then on the promise that's returned. It's the, it's the same thing, right? If, if it helps, I can just write a little bit of code where we do that. So instead of having an await right here, um, this guy can return you know, a promise, assuming that the API layer is returning that promise. Uh, actually, sorry, this is in the wrong place. It's not at this layer. It's in the API layer. So this guy would be the one to return a promise. Um, so it would be static get ID, and if it's, let's see, um, something like this. And then you could always do, um, uh, I can't remember what the promise, it's not fulfill, it's, um, somebody help me out here. When you want to I'm trying to remember. complete the promise, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm having an you know, old guy moment when my brain's not working. Um, and then this guy right here, since the API is probably already returning a promise, you need to do a then uh, function with the result or the response. Like that. Um, and you would do. There's resolve, reject. Resolve. Thank you. Wow. I cannot believe I forgot that. Resolve with uh, the response dot body. Well, actually, I would probably do it this way. Like this. And then we're going to resolve it with this guy. Okay. 
Maybe something like this. We can refactor this and clean it up and make it a little bit nicer, but I think that's the general idea. But you can okay. see how it's a little bit, it's a little less visually appealing. Um, yeah. I, it, it's harder to know what's going on in this function. You've got to kind of read into the function and go, oh, this is going to return me a promise and this other stuff's going to happen. And when the promise is done, we'll get back some data. And then, you know, the layer above, when you call it get on the products API, uh, API dot get, you know, with stuff, you're going to do a then. Um, so it's all this code up here, or some variation thereof, you know, that probably doesn't work. We probably have to debug and clean it up. But, you know, this versus this, where I can immediately look and say, oh, this is an async function. I know I'm going to get back a promise essentially from that async function and then I can await on that function if I need to. So, so that that's kind of why I'm pushing towards this is because I think that this is how we'll handle our asynchronous uh, method calls in the future and so I would rather use async await now um, since we can and since webpack is going to turn this back into uh, ES5 out of the syntax. All right. Any other questions, or is that does that make sense? No, thank you. All right. Thanks, you guys. Yep. Thank you.